Hey everyone, um, this week we'll be starting our uh, high stakes synthesis assignment. Um, I wanted to do a quick video going over um, how to do that. I wanted to work through the assignment sheet with you. Um, I wanted to show you guys how to access your shared class folders and where you're going to be writing the assignment. And I just wanted to give a general overview um, of course, if you have any questions after watching the overview, please um, send me an email and we can work through it. Synthesis can be a slightly complicated topic um, to wrap our minds around, but it, it really sounds um, way more complicated than it actually is. So starting out, um, you're watching this video, of course, but in the weekly schedule, there's the high stakes synthesis assignment sheet. If you click there, um, it will take you to the assignment sheet. We dipped our toes in synthesis last week for the weekly writing assignment. Um, and that was just a little bit of practice. But for this assignment, um, you're going to be doing the same thing, but it's going to be on um, a slightly more broad scale. So the synthesis assignment is going to be split into three separate parts. We have your first draft, which is going to be due this coming Sunday. Um, there's the peer review, which will be conducted next week. And then there is a final draft. And that's going to be about 750 words. Um, I cut the length a little bit since we had the weekly writing assignment last week focusing on synthesis. I thought it might be a bit easier to shorten this one um, because you guys... Um, Put a lot of time and effort into the one last week ostensibly. So I know this says 2022. I will go back and fix this. But for this assignment, um, in the synthesis essay, you are going to enter into an academic conversation by identifying a debatable issue, taking a position on that issue, and producing a sophisticated argument. Synthesizing, here's our keyword here, synthesizing, and integrating multiple sources as support. So when we synthesize sources, um, I heard this explained in this particular way a few years back, actually, we are getting sources in conversation with one another. So we have an argument um, or an argumentative thesis, and we are taking multiple sources and we're connecting them with one another. We're getting them in conversation with one another. And we are using that to support our argument. So this assignment will require your critical thinking and analytical reading skills. You will choose your own topic for this essay using the themes in commons. Um, you're gonna be looking through the themes in our textbook and you will be um, building an argument um, with some of the readings in the textbook. So you don't have to limit yourself to pulling from sources that belong to a single theme. Um, you can look for other connections between readings as well from different themes. Um, you can combine selections from themes or pull from only one. It's really up to you. The big thing here is you can't use sources outside of our readings or our textbook. Um, that's more of an English 102 thing. When you enter 102, that is largely research-based. So you're going to be researching and using the library and all of those things in English 102. But for 101, we're focusing on the texts that we have given to us and we're digging into those and we're practicing analysis and synthesis. Um, that's what we're focusing on here. So make sure you are just pulling from the readings that we have in this class, in our little bubble. So direct instructions, um, you're gonna want to read broadly at first to help you identify your interests. Um, you should then choose at minimum three essays from the commons to read analytically and to annotate independently. So we're not doing a weekly writing assignment per se this week. Um, we're not doing our typical Discord discussion this week. We are just focusing on the various scaffolded steps for this synthesis assignment. So you're going to be doing your independent reading and annotation. 
Um, you're going to identify a debatable issue using your close reading of those three or possibly more selections. So you're going to be crafting an argument um, based on what you're thinking about some of the readings. You're going to take a strong position on that issue. And then you're going to write a thesis driven essay in which you enter into an academic conversation by identifying the issue for an academic audience. Another keyword here, think about your audience that is unfamiliar with the issue and convincingly argue for your position. And then you will be, of course, using three readings as support. You're going to be synthesizing information from those readings. You're going to be taking those quotes and getting them to work together, um, citing your various sources and various parts from those sources to support your argument. So here are some suggested steps. It'll make it far easier if you follow these steps. Read, annotate, and choose your three texts. Um, really focus on those texts. Think about the ideas, do some brainstorming, um, do some note taking, figure out what you want to argue, and then develop a tentative thesis around your argument. And always remember your thesis can change. It can change over time based on what you've learned and what you're reading. Um, it's never set in stone. You could be changing your thesis around up until the last couple of minutes before you submit your paper. Um, that will be pretty consistent throughout your academic career. You'll always be adjusting based on what you've learned. So you're going to organize evidence around that thesis and you want to be as specific as possible. You want to use direct language. You want the reader to understand what you're saying. Be direct. And then as you revise, prioritize keeping your essay focused. Remember and really think about what you want to say. Um, what's your purpose? What do you want the reader to take away from your project? For this to be a successful essay, you want to have a thesis. Remember the acronym TOE, Topic Opinion Evidence. You're going to want to synthesize evidence from your chosen texts. So remember the weekly writing assignment from last week. You are looking at multiple sources. You are getting those quotes into your paper and you are making connections between them and connecting them with your argument. You want to conform to MLA format guidelines including MLA citations. So you're going to want to cite each one of the works that you pull into your paper. Um, and remember, those have to be from this class. This isn't so important this semester. This is completely optional. Um, if you want to have a meeting and discuss synthesis, discuss how your um, sources are in conversation with one another, how you can develop that, um, we can have a meeting during office hours or um, if you can't meet during Monday office hours, we can organize another time to meet. That is always optional. Um, I'm really good about finding time outside of office hours to meet with students. And I meet with students almost every day of the week across different courses. So don't feel bad if you have to reach out. Um, it's always good if it can be during office hours, but we can always find a way to meet if you can't during that little time frame. And you also have to participate in drafting and peer review. Um, again, those are super important in this course. Drafting, engaging in the writing process, and peer review and interacting with others and seeing other perspectives. Two and three minds are always greater than one. And it's great to communicate with people. It's It helps us survive this life. So make sure you are engaging in both of these. You have to have a first draft and you need to complete a peer review. So that's basically it for the assignment. Um, but there are a few things I want to highlight for this. Um, as you are drafting, you wanna make sure you're doing it in your Google Doc. So you're gonna want to Open Blackboard and on the left-hand side ribbon, you want to scroll down to shared class folder and then student folders, core assignments. 
look for your name, go over to synthesis assignment, and then click there. So you'll be working in your synthesis assignment document. Uh, instructor. And remember the little formatting things we've discussed this semester. So you can use um, any of your typical fonts. You want to make sure that that is 12 point font. You're going to want to make sure that everything is double spaced. And then you want to also make sure you have And the way you do that, you come up to this ribbon. Um, here's a line. Typically, I, for most of the papers I've written over the last few years, Times New Roman 12 point font. Um, and you also want to insert page numbers in the top right hand corner. So you're going to go up to insert. See, unless things have changed, things may have moved. Oh, let's see. There is somewhere where you can find page numbers. <clears throat> I thought it was here. That is so weird. It could be in formatting. Hmm. Okay. I will backtrack and if anyone needs help with adding page numbers, we can do a separate tutorial, just um, send me a message on Discord if you're needing help figuring that out because I can do a separate tutorial because this looks very different from the last time that I used it, which is very strange. I used it just a few months ago and included page numbers. Okay, I won't waste any more time on this. But wait, I think I might know. Okay, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so I have this set up at pageless. Um, ignore the pageless part. I have that automatically set up because most of the things I share with students, um, I make it pageless, so it's one seamless document. But when you're doing it, it should automatically be set to. Um, with pages. So you'll click insert, you'll navigate down to page numbers, and then in the top right hand corner, um, you'll want your page numbers. You'll put your last name. We'll make sure that font is correct, or at least aligns with what you're using here. And that's that. Um, that's how you set it up. MLA paper, that is how it is formatted. Okay, 
So we've gone over the synthesis assignment, how to format your paper, um, and how to synthesize sources. So one last thing, um, when you are going through and you're choosing the sources you're going to be using for this, something that may help If you move down to, let's see, page, page six has different themes grouped together. Um, there's politics, pop culture, research, sociology, technology, literacy, Appalachia, classics, diversity, ecology, gender, and history. And then of course, there's the other readings that we've done this semester. Um, you'll wanna look through those. If you have a particular theme in mind already, that's cool. If you wanna put themes together, that's also fine. Um, the themes grouping is on page six of the textbook. So you'll want to pick out some of these readings and begin brainstorming, but that is how you access the themes. And one great thing about this let me see. It is awesome that the themes are grouped together, but you can also click them. So it'll take you down to where a theme starts. It will unpack that theme itself. And then um, you can go from there and look at the various readings. So that should be it for this one. Um, Again, make sure you are doing your drafting in your assigned um, Google document. Um, when you are turning in your document, it would not hurt to cut and paste the link for that document, um, paste it into the assignment spot on Blackboard so it's all together where it should be. And if you have any questions in the meantime, make sure you send me an email. I'm always here for it. Um, I hope you guys are having an awesome week and I'll talk to you soon.